Hello, everybody. Um, Kite and I are going to take turns on a couple things, but we're going to go ahead and introduce the Kite guitar. I hope I'm coming through well. Uh, I didn't actually know some things about the context. I'll give you just a quick background. Uh, 20 years ago, when I first contacted people on the tuning list trying to find out how to get something like Barbershop Harmony on a guitar, I remember specifically that I believe it was Dave and Paul who sent me private emails, to my surprise, saying, oh, maybe it sounds like what you want is maybe like a subset of 41. And I had these graphs of like partial frets that would be parts of 41 on some guitar. And I was just like, that's too, I don't want partial frets. I don't want to deal with this. I don't know. And I just gave up. And 20 years later, whatever, all these things, I got a tonal plexus keyboard and other experiments. But somehow, a couple years ago, Kite invented what I thought was impossible, which is the Kite guitar. And I'm going to show you how what that is today. It's, uh, we'll get into the theory of it. But I'm just going to show you something that this can do. So my goal is to have something like Just Intonation on a practical, playable, not too weird, you know, actually flexible guitar. So check this out. So it's pretty well in tune. It matches the harmonics. But hey, I can go past that. almost a perfect J.I. guitar in terms of this just sounds so blended and yet it doesn't look all that weird it's just a few extra frets so the trick is this is a 41 Edo guitar but it doesn't have all 41 frets so it has every other fret of 41 here's what one string sounds like so that's one string half of 41 but if I use two strings I have all of 41 Edo, the complete set, here, right under my fingers on this relatively simple guitar. Uh, this one's actually a pretty cheap guitar, but I hope the sound is coming through well enough. This is one of the first real guitars of this uh, type. So, because this can do everything that an Edo can do with the flexibility and modulation and everything else, but it's also basically close to J.I., we say it has the beauty of extended just intonation and the freedom of an equal temperament. So. With this, I finally can do what I was dreaming of, which was Barbershop Harmony right under my fingers on a guitar. There you go. So um, I used to work with uh, just intonation almost exclusively back when I did all MIDI, but I prefer 41 equal now, 41 Edo. Um, it simplifies things by tempering out all the little fiddly five and cent 10 commas like 225 over 224. And it's close enough to JI to me that I'm pretty content with it. I don't mind the slight tempering. I, I, I don't mind doing that in exchange for all the freedom. Yeah, so let me show you off this idea. One of the features that can prove how close to J.I. we are is that on a regular 12 Edo instrument, a lot of people with distortion on guitar play uh, just power chords, fifths and fourths, you know, because they're actually pretty close in tune. Otherwise, the wobble of the interference beats is too strong with distortion. So, you know, I've got my fifths and fourths, but I can play thirds or even sevenths. It's totally solid. This is like J.I. Harmony. Okay, so there's some trade-offs. For one thing, the uh, the regular um, guitar tuning doesn't work where it's mostly forced. Instead, you uh, instead we the standard guitar tuning, there's others, but the standard tuning is uh, major thirds, the five over four type major thirds. And um, 
so you have to relearn a lot. The good news is that it's the same gap from every string, which makes it isomorphic. And uh, as a result, um, you can just make a one interval chart that you can use anywhere in the fretboard. This is a fretboard chart. The, string, the strings run side to side. Uh, the circled notes are the, ton the tonic, the fourth, the fifth, and the octave. I'll give you a little landmark there. Um, and the cool thing about this is that every nine odd limit ratio, every one digit ratio and its, in, its octave inverse is right there on the chart and uh, within easy reach because that's only a couple frets away on either side. And almost everything in there is one of those uh, nine odd limit ratios. So what's going on is it's 41 equal, 41 Edo, sorry. <laughs> but it's, um, you get it. You have a set of about 25 notes that are right there, and uh, what's left, 16 notes that are kind of like a little, um, little out of reach. And it just works out that those 25 notes are the smallest ratios. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the second row. Oh, I can use my cursor here, can I? See the second row yep. there on the, from the bottom? So it starts with 9 over 8, and then you have this rainbow of four thirds. That's all the, all the simple ratios that make thirds the simplest, I should say. Then comes the fourth, then comes 11 over eight, then comes 10 over seven. This might uh, look familiar to those of you that play uh, 19 Edo or 22 Edo guitars, because it basically has that same run of notes. And what's really kind of cool is that 19 plus 22 makes 41, and we're leaving out half the frets, so it's 20.5 frets per octave. So what we're doing is we're kind of averaging 19 and 22 together to get 20.5. And I, I kind of think it's combining the best of both Edo's. The fifth, instead of being sharp or flat, is dead on. And the seven over four ratio, the seventh harmonic is, is, is very good. And that's kind of what disappoints me personally about 19 and 22 is uh, they kind of conflate seven over four with other ratios. And here it's clearly seven over four. And it's like, wow, that's it. Um, it's uh, three cents flat. So this is called skip fretting, where you leave out um, some of the frets. You have a big Edo, but you leave out some of the frets to make it more playable. You might wonder, does this work with other Edos? Not as well. I checked. Uh, it'd be nice if it worked for 31, but it really doesn't because 6 over 5 and 5 over 4 become hard to reach. You could treat 31 Edo as a no 5 uh, Edo and make it work that way, but you kind of lose something that you expect to have. And the cool thing about the kite guitar is you kind of don't lose much. Um, so anyway, if you uh, there are some other Edos that are bigger or you or really big, you leave leave off more than every other fret, like every third or fourth. I should mention Matthew Autry here for pioneering pioneering the whole concept of skip fretting and turning me on to the concept. But uh, in my opinion, forty one is definitely of all the possible ways to skip frets is the most playable and most practical. Yeah. So I'm going to show off a couple other things on the guitar here. Uh, I should mention, just to be clear about that chart, all the fingers, that, all the notes you want are right under your fingers, but because they're not duplicated on each string, there are situations like if I have a, a simple chord. So that has root, third, fifth, seventh, eight. So the seven and eight are on the same string. And if I wanted them together, I couldn't go to another string to get them. They're only there on that same string. So I'd have to do a a workaround with an open two string or two guitars or uh, tap. There's there's some ways to do it, but you know, just like any guitar, no guitar can play a cluster of notes. You know that you can't reach with your fingers. So, for the most part, everything you want is there. And how do you know which notes to play? Well, the ones that are next to the other notes are the ones that are in tune, which is the amazingness of this. So it makes it easy to play pretty normal music. I could play you know some one four five folk songs if I wanted. <laughs> Give you another little quick demo, just showing off how this how well this works. So you probably don't notice too much with that. It just sounds like pretty normal music. In fact, I play this for most people. Uh, if I wanted to get somebody interested in another guitar, 
Uh, this isn't going to be like, oh, everything you play is now new and weird. But if I wanted to be new and weird, I could. But I have pretty normal sounding music here. Uh, but you might not have noticed there was actually a couple pitch shifts in there. And then... Now that's pretty subtle. That's like the 81 over 80 comma. It's just one little shift. And it's just justified by how well it blends. I think it's also masked a little bit. The fact that it's on a different string means the timbre changes a little bit. And so it doesn't quite as in your face as with some synth. Uh, all the problems that people say of, you know, this pitch shift is slimy and whatever, it just doesn't seem to be a problem. It just comes across very naturally. I, I actually had more of a problem on the tonal plexus. I would notice these little things. And on the guitar, it's, they don't really bother me at all. In fact, I think they sometimes are expressive. Uh, so just want to mention briefly uh, that we can do certain things like this happens to be coincidentally 12 frets per perfect fifth. That's actually the same thing. If it was divide the perfect fifth into 12 equal spaces, that's the same actual thing. And so you can do something like this. So that's, yeah, kind of, What's uh, the... Yeah, yeah, we always uh, get something. Can you go back to the thing before and do the... Uh... Oh, show them the bass line, first of all. That's oh, such the a bass cool line? voice, the vo voice Well, I'll just there. do that quickly, yeah. So this thing that I was doing, you might not have noticed. So it actually uses the plane two on the way up. And then the one that's part of the four chord on the way down goes... And you barely notice it, but that's the down two. So the down two is both melodically pointing in the right direction. And of course, so that's like a 10-9 versus a 9-8 on the way up. And the same thing the other way. Uh, but so, so I have all the things that you'd expect in just intonation, but it's actually under my fingers. And you can do all the math if you want, but it, it's sort of the logic is very natural as a ge the geometry of the instrument. I'll cool. turn it over to Travis with one little quick thing, which is just to mention that uh, obviously you can play more than Western music on this because I can play something like this. Because I still have all of 41 Edo, so it's pretty expressive. And uh, Travis will show us off some deeper things that you can do with this. Uh... This is Kite's piece. Rondo Gonzo, or uh, Evening Rondo, as, as it may be called.
Uh, what's it called? It's called the Evening Rondo, and it's part of Un12's uh, newest uh, edition, the Zalzal edition of microtonal pieces. So you can get it from the Un12 website, or you can get the score from uh, tallkite.com, and I decided to make the score free. It does require a seven-string kite guitar to play the full score. Yes. And that bottom note is luscious, you know, it's, it's so grounded, you know, I, what is it minus, I'm going to guess like minus nine from what, where it usually is, or even more, but it's, it seems so right. You know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about, right? Like this one low note that just comes in and goes like, bong. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's actually one below that even. It's how much lower is it than, than usual? That's a that's a roughly an F. So that's actually sharp of E a little bit. Oh, sharp of E, and it sounds so solid. Yeah. So so Travis actually has an eight string guitar there. Keep keep in mind if you have near J I harmonies, you end up with difference tones that really work, and you actually end up with these notes that you don't get when on in other uh, situations. Cool. Um, I I got a, I got a question for everybody here. Uh, so when Aaron played that bass line. Did, how many people heard the pitch shift before we pointed it out? I, did, I definitely did. Okay. Um, not bad for, for this level of expertise and experience. It looks like maybe a third or a quarter, maybe a quarter caught it. The, the guy's in gray, I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> pretty good. I think we fooled too, three-fourths so. of you guys. Um, <laughs> I, I want to I make a, a, a really important point. I just realized a couple days ago. Aaron, could you play the other example, the one you usually do right after that? Yeah, sure. This one. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, who heard the pitch shift? Pretty good. I, I, Who I heard the I other pitch shift? <laughs> yes, it's, good. How many? Five, Two, three? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. isolate the, okay, I'll isolate oh, yeah. the specific, the, the one chord here. And then it's like a four chord, but it actually has a six in it. Of course, to down six, because that would make it blend nicely. And then if I go to the five chord and I play it like this, which is perfectly fine, it all works. You have a warp between those two pitches, so. And then. So. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on is you got, you got six over five in the first chord, and then it's shrinking inwards to seven over six. So let's, let's talk about the, uh, the standard idea of microtonal music is if you're going to pump 81 over 80, you do it in an Edo that tempers out 8180 or temperament. If you pump 64 over 63, you do it in Edo that tempers out 64 over 63. And if you want to play this piece, well, you could play it in an Edo that tempers out both, but that's 12 Edo, and that's kind of boring and out of tune. Um, it's It kind of makes you... Uh, it kind of like, um, I, let me back up a bit. There's a school of uh, thought that, you know, pitch shifts are to be avoided and you should play in an Edo because it's just simpler and you don't have to worry about this little slimy movement. Slimy is barbershop slang, by the way. <laughs> but uh, there's really no way to play this, what Aaron played reasonably in tune without pitch shifts. So there's times you just have to do it. And the thing and, that's interesting is that if you look at the voice leading, it's actually in the correct direction. Like if you think of yeah. the two and the three, you kind of both point, the, sorry, the two and the four of the scale, both point to the major third of the scale when you end up resolving, you know, back down to the, so, you know, or the, so in just the four chord, like literally this, and then as part of the five chord, that's going the right direction, voice leading wise, to get you back to, so it's musically effective. It doesn't feel, totally out of place so this works because 81 over 80 and 64 63 both get mapped to one edo step or one half fret on the kite guitar 
So we can get away with mean tone pumps. We can get away with Archie pumps. And we can get away with pumping other commas that also map to only half a fret, such as Porcupine, Pajara, Semaphore, Starling, and Jubilismic, and a couple more. And of course, there's the commas at 40 when yield tempers out totally like Magic, Marvel, and Miracle. So the point is you can do a lot in 41 if you allow pitch shifts. This is a side issue, but uh, I think besides that it's amazing that Kite discovered this mathematical you know, uniqueness that he developed into a usable guitar. Uh, and I've been you know, working with him since he first announced this day one, which was he borrowed a fretless guitar of mine and a few others and put zip ties on it and showed up one day at his birthday party and said, hey, everybody, look what I did to your guitar. And then he showed me that all these things are right in a row and it's all in tune and you know, mind blowing. Um, so hence the kite guitar. But coincidentally, over time, as we've developed what the standards are, it just absolutely for tons of reasons works that you have this inlay pattern of a single dot, double dot, triple dot, and then that repeats again, single, double, triple, and the single, double, triple dot makes a kite shape, actually. <laughs> and that's not a, that wasn't chosen for that reason. It's just like everything about this yeah. is a miracle. I, after I, I we mean came it. up with a dot pattern and put it on the guitar and looked at it, one of us said, hey, wait a minute, that looks like a kite. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Aaron, if you want to uh, play your little barbershop piece. Oh yeah, well, so one of my, my favorite little thing to do, like from just even getting my hands on this, was to do like my favorite barbershop tag thing that suddenly I can play under my hands just like this. I'll do the simple version first. Of course you could have a drone there. So that has this fretwise motion that is even more effective than you, know, you sort of standard barbershoppers wouldn't think of this. Uh, maybe if we gave them ups and downs to guide them, but we have this. So it's like, uh, there's the five, then it goes to the down six, and then to the up flat six, to the down flat six, on the way back to the five. So if you can hear that in, the same progression as my my piece in 22 equal called a rock thing and uh but, but now i can the, play it with distortion right yeah, because it they, actually is in like near ji <laughs> the, the harmonies are definitely purer in in 41 than they are in 22 so i was going to specifically play this bluesy sort of thing that i was doing to show ji stuff and i start with an 11 going like this yeah cool. Thank you. 